New Thought Media Network. We are a global broadcast network of positive music, media, and entertainment. Inspiring humanity's evolution along the journey of enlightenment and creating a world of love, peace, empowerment, and prosperity for all. New Thought Media Network. Positively inspiring. New Thought Media Network is proud to present Cosmic Prayers, your weekly shift, Mondays at 11, Mountain Time, with your host, Laura Topper. The Cosmic Prayers, live from the UK. And now, here she is, Laura Topper. Hi, and welcome to the I always love that introduction. Thank you, Reverend Robert, for that. Um, and I notice it says 11 o'clock, or he says 11 o'clock. It's actually 10 a.m. Mountain Time. So wherever you are, this beautiful planet, uh, welcome here. You have tuned into New Thought Media Network, whether you're watching it live with us now or you're catching up with this at some later date. This is um, a beautiful, beautiful broadcast that we have today. I'm just so excited to welcome Reverend Catherine Knox onto the Cosmic Prayer. Reverend Catherine is an extraordinary and inspirational spiritual leader and minister. She is the Dean of the Centers for Spiritual Living School of Spiritual Leadership, the Florida campus, and along with Reverend uh, Marilyn, uh, Reverend Catherine has held so many practitioners and ministers' hands along their way of their inner journey on their calling into ministerial. And I'm one of them. <laughs> I'm with the Florida campus, so I know Reverend Catherine, and I just feel so honored and blessed to welcome you here today, Reverend Catherine, onto the Cosmic Prayer. <laughs> Um, well, thank you, thank Laura. You it's here. my honor to be here. It's wonderful. And you're in Florida at the moment, aren't you? So bringing yes. the sunshine in to the cosmic prayer. And Reverend yeah. Catherine, I've, I've just been excited for weeks knowing that you're going to be here and to talk about prayer because that's such an integral part of our spiritual practice and our philosophy. And who else other than you? to talk about this beautiful topic and your experience of prayer and how prayer has guided you in your life, on your journey as a minister and as a dean and of the School of Spiritual Leadership also. How integral has the practice of prayer been for you in your life? Oh, it is, I would say, the center of my spiritual practices. For me, Prayer started when I was a child. My father was a Presbyterian minister. And so being raised in that environment, prayer was always focused in a different way than I do it now as an adult. As But it, I believe that I was so blessed to be raised knowing that there was a power greater than I was and that I could depend on that throughout my life and watching my parents do that. So. Um, wow. Did they instill that into you or is it something that you picked up from watching them or was it something they taught you purposefully? Well, I, I feel like it's something I did when I was watching them, but we, we had regular prayer times, prayer before bed, prayer before eating, um, all of the different things that are traditional Christian um, habits. And so I was glad I had that, even though I felt like a Sunday interfered with my other plans. <laughs> and so <laughs> when, I, when I was out of the home and for about 10 years, I uh, walked away from formal uh the Christianity that I was in because I was beginning to doubt some of the teachings. Absolutely. Were you, were you doubting the power of prayer? No, never, never doubted. I always knew that there was a God 
that there was a higher power that I could depend on whenever I was in a difficult situation or if I had an intention in my life that I wanted to have happen as quickly as possible, prayer was my go-to. So prayer is so important in life. Um, that I feel like that's how I was, um, was guided to the Peace Corps in my 20s. And what a yeah. wonderful experience that was. Mm -hmm. I was going to mention that because it was it, it. We've spoken on that so many times, and you've explained that. I, I just want to ask, uh, just to say one thing here, though, because I really, I never, I never knew that about you about how prayer being so, such a part of woven into your childhood, and that's that's mm -hmm. just so beautiful. Because for me, that didn't happen. I didn't have that that knowing of prayer as a young child or as a, mm -hmm. as a teenager or as a young adult, it wasn't, it was something I discovered. And so mm -hmm. that must have been so, given you so much confidence to know that in, in your heart that you could just lean on that at any time. Wow. Absolutely. And that I was protected, that I was protected in wherever I was because uh, flying over to, um, it was in the Seychelles Islands in the Indian Ocean, and I went through uh, Kenya at a very young age, and I was raised in Washington State, so I had very little uh, experience with uh, people of color. And um, that was, I lived in a country for three years that I was the minority, absolutely. So it was a great education and it was fun and I had best friends and um, I liked that kind of island living. So, and that's one thing that wow. attracted me to Florida was I liked humidity. We were three degrees south of the right. equator. <laughs> so I that love was that, you're first. hopping from one thing to the next with the same thread. Yeah. Like Wow. So, so going to the Seychelles and being part of the Peace Corps, did you lean on prayer or were you asked for prayer in that? I mean, how prayer, how important was prayer for you in that process of being there? Well, very. And especially my the guidance in being the best that I could be for the position that I was uh, brought over to that country for and the ability to be adaptable to the situation. It was not as I was told it was going to be when I was recruited. It was right. very different. And many people came over and then they had to leave uh, because it, it wasn't what they thought it was going to be. But by being adaptable and uh, doing my prayer work, I also... I tried to be part of a spiritual community when I was there, but um, I was raised Presbyterian and all there were on the island was Catholicism, um, Episcopalian or Church of England, and then uh, Seventh-day Adventist. And that was it. And right. so when I tried the Church of England, it just, it never fit. So I had to just be my own counsel. And 20, what, 30 years ago, there was no uh, TV, no washers and dryers, nothing like that. And so letters were few and far between from family. Right. So, so I, uh, but there were a lot of other uh, volunteers from Switzerland and UK and uh, Germany and um, Irish. <laughs> So, so you had we, fun. We were all group. yeah, we were all yeah. group. yes, yes. So, so that what that did for me was it freed me of being scared with other life adventures mm -hmm. as we go along, as I went through my life. Yeah. So, so I was thankful. Wow. And I know this is kind of, you know, fast forwarding. I, I, there's, you know, there are so many, so many things that I admire in you as a, as a, as a being. And one of the things that I absolutely admire is that you have, you, you really live your truth. 
and you're a dean of a ministerial educational school and being a dean of universities and colleges for many years and making that shift into bringing that into spirituality i think that is just so powerful because you're living your truth and your wholeness with what you do and um and i wonder how prayer has guided you along your way to really living that truth uh -huh. Well, I was searching when I got back, and um, I have to tell you that when I found, it wasn't too long, I think two years after I returned to the United States, and I found, I was introduced, I'd moved to Lakeland, Colorado, and a woman who is now a minister, by the way, a CSL minister, uh, lived in our community and showed up at my door and invited me to a welcome wagon lunch. And I went and then as we talked, we ran a business together and she talked about Mile High Church. And just in 1979, in January, I visited Mile High Church of Religious Science in Denver. And I said, I am home because it had all of the things that I questioned, uh, particularly for me, it was, why do I have to go through Jesus to get to God? And that Which was the biggest. Was a, sorry to interrupt. Mm -hmm. That was just, so was that what your prayer was all about up until that point? Going through Jesus yes. to get to God? Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. That's right. And so I started in Science of Mind 1 then, and then you learn more and you learn more and you learn more. And what was beautiful is that religious science is a correlation of philosophy and science, and it's classified as a religion because we hold a belief system about God. And of course, now, 30 years later, New Thought is a recognized world religion and religious science, our Centers for Spiritual Living, falls in that category of world religions, which it was, that is so exciting to me that we have come that far. And uh, back there 30 years ago, we were the best kept secret in the world. And I don't think, <laughs> I don't believe that anymore. I think through efforts of many, many, many uh, new thought individuals, not just religious science, but unity and divine science and independent metaphysical churches. So I'm, I'm thrilled. But when I got started in um, Science of Mind, which I was 30 years old, and I thought that I was... I always said, oh, I wish I had to run into this when I was younger. And now that I'm where I am and living my vision that I pictured for the end of my work life to be a, because I was in education so long, to be, to include my education experience with my faith and having, being able to do those both it's uh it was the dream of my life starting yeah. in ministerial school so and and, and you so set I, that intention I, you you purposefully set that intention and allowed it to unravel yes and i didn't any longer have to just set my intention i could use my higher power i could use god i could use spirit i could use energy i could use universal intelligence, I could use creativity, all of the qualities of the divine that is everywhere present to bring about my intention in the realization step of, treat, of what we call treatment, affirmative prayer, yeah. to bring that about so that God knew what I was about and expressed right. through me. What a difference that made from my childhood and and 20s upbringing yes because wow. um 
And then once I had this faith to stand on through prayer, through our other spiritual practices of meditation, of learning the laws of the universe to be in alignment with those laws at every moment of the day. Now, keep in mind, I've had 30 years to, <laughs> to develop yeah, this. That, that is an ongoing practice, isn't it? I mean, yeah. we talk about it and we, we say, you know, the awareness that, that we're cultivating within ourselves is a continual practice, isn't it? Yes, it is, until it's a yeah. habit. Until yeah. you don't, the way you live, your positivity, yeah. your faith, your trust, your belief in the universal energy that is the higher power, it's uh, amazing that it becomes such a habitual thing. And of course, we, we have to really study it comes, I believe, you know, change your thinking, change your life. So the thinking has to be changed first. People, we talk a lot about it going that 18 inches from the head to the heart. Mm -hmm. And that is really important. But it does start with our logical minds to learn uh, prayer, the affirmative prayer, to learn how to meditate to learn about the laws of the universe, the mental equivalents, the law of attraction, the law of polarity, all the laws that aren't so uh, famous. Yes. Uh, there's, there's many, many so laws many that, so that you can be in alignment with them. And also what caught my eye when I started Science of Mind was, wow, if there's all these laws and I can be in alignment. And, and I think it was Holmes that said, you know, we can go along with our lives in the law of averages and 50% will be bad experiences and 50% will be good. However, if you learn all the spiritual laws and learn how to align with them and be in alignment with God, it changes our averages of good versus bad in our lives. <laughs> I, and it I has thought, to, oh. doesn't it? <laughs> mm -hmm. oh. I'm so pleased that you you brought this in because even to today, I had a moment, you know, where I my mind was going down a road that I knew wasn't helpful. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then I said to myself, Laura, come on, you have a choice here. You have a choice. And I shifted. The whole way that I was thinking, I, I, I shifted, and it's about that for me. It's like having that constant awareness that we're trying to change this in the moment, and um, it's that that's what you, what you're. I feel what you're saying is that we all do that. We go down. Whoops! So it's how quickly how quickly we come back? How quickly we come back? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I and Laura, I, Marilyn, no. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to say Marilyn Earhart is my registrar. And six years yeah. ago, well, in 2014, so it would be seven years ago now, um, we sat down on a couch when we were answering a request for a proposal for an Eastern uh, campus of School of Spiritual Leadership to see if we, because Marilyn was my registrar, at two of the colleges where I was president. And um, so we came together and we spent five hours sitting on a couch, punching, pushing numbers, doing, knowing that this was our calling and would it work? Because you must have a financial uh, plan to uh, keep it going. And so after that, we said, yes, we can do this and uh, gathered a team together. Reverend Peggy, our director now, is, was on the team and uh, many others to put in for approval of the campus on the East Coast. So I have to give Marilyn lots of credit and she's remained our registrar to make sure that all the details of every student are handled. And I appreciate her. 
Oh, yes, Reverend Marilyn and the work that she does. And together, your intention is so strong. And I know when I began on, on my ministerial journey and I and you told me, you know, it's either time, treasure or talent that yes. will make a difference as to how long the process is and to have that faith uh, where I couldn't see that it could be possible for me financially at the beginning of the journey of my calling there. Mm. And mm. as it's unraveling, I remind myself, yeah, Reverend Catherine is, <laughs> was right. <laughs> have that faith. And it does unfold yes. in, in divine perfect, uh, perfection. So is that a part of your prayer practice to pray on faith, to know, or is that something you just know anyway, to have that? Well, faith? I know it anyway now, but yeah. prayer in the beginning, and I think always must be first and foremost, because it is about your connection, your communion with God and knowing that it is, um, it is, uh, and I have to apologize. I my phone okay. went off. Anyway, um, yes, I feel like that is tremendously important. But it wasn't very long. I mean, outside of ministerial school, and then having my first uh, full time ministry, that you you end up following exactly what Jesus says, and that is pray unceasingly. Mm -hmm. Because I had, I have to tell you an example. I had a teacher in ministerial school, and I really liked him. Um, what was he teaching? I think I want to say Greek mythology or some, some topic like that. And so he would be lecturing, and he would not like the energy in the room. So he would say to us, oh, close your eyes and go inside. And how easy it was when you learn, you close your eyes, you go inside, you feel that divine presence that is expressing through you, that is your sanctuary, that is your sacred space. And then he would say a few words to bring us all as the oneness that we are in this great cosmic mind of God um, together. We would open our eyes a few minutes later. He would go on his lecture, but it totally changed the energy in the room. Mm. That was one of my wow. lessons early on. And so I knew that at any point in time that if somebody said, gave me a call or texted me or emailed me, and said, please pray, you can close your eyes, go inside, and know the wholeness of for that individual when they can't know it for themselves. Yeah. So prayer is is very important. But as we learn it, we there's a memorization that happens, change your thinking, and uh as someone said in my first college, uh, she was an instructor and in our paralegal, and she said, repetition is the mother of retention. Right. Because some of my students, even in ministerial school, as divine as they are and as smart as they all are, will say, I already learned that in another class. And I would have to say, but repetition is the mother of retention. <laughs> And that's what we're okay. doing here. Changing your creating new habits. And these are all habits, aren't they? Laura, you're break, breaking up and I can hardly hear you. I'm sorry. We're changing our habits and those habits are stuck and old. And for some of us, 40 years, 50 years, 60 years old. And when we when we get to around to noticing those beliefs, it takes a while to shift that into a new, into the new, doesn't it? So it is about repetition. Yes, yes. So, that is true. So I, yeah. So I'm really interested if you, uh, for you to share, I know the, the campus, the, the Florida campus mm -hmm. has been a huge demonstration for you 
in terms of planting that seed and knowing that it's done and you patiently waiting for it to unfold and meeting Reverend Marilyn and Reverend Peggy and all the pieces coming together. Could you talk on that for a moment? Because so often we want something to happen and we pray and we think it should happen immediately. And that's mm. not how it works, is it? I mean, sometimes well, not always, it does. But it, sometimes it does. it does. But I mean, there is a process to being patient and allowing mm. it to unfold. Right. And I think, too, it's about trust and belief, confidence and faith. Now, yeah. I have to go back before this because in ministerial school, I had had my first college presidency before I went into ministerial school. And I chose Mile High because they had the closest in those years to what I felt like a campus should be. So I was in Alaska with my first college presidency and Reverend Nancy Sweeney was my minister. And when that uh, campus, when that college, the corporation got in trouble and it closed. And I was painting in the new church we had bought, purchased. And Reverend Nancy said, you know, you would make a fabulous minister. And I think it does take somebody to recognize our qualities uh, to move us forward. And I yeah. said, oh, yes. So I called every campus that I knew of and I was going to go uh, to a CSL uh, campus. And I ended up in Denver. Now, uh, Kathleen Vogt was my dean and she was struggling with keeping track of all the students. And so I became her registrar at that time. Wow. And I want to say that Sunday Cote, who is coming this weekend to Orlando to give our graduation address, and Marilyn and myself, we were all in the School of Spiritual Leadership. I mean, it was Holmes Institute at that time, together. And now we're meeting up again for oh. the first time in, from in many years. And what, so when you, when we say, the colleagues with you in ministerial school are your friends for a lifetime. It is so true. But that, that being helping Reverend Kathleen vote with the school gave me then the vision, even though Michael Beckwith envisioning was not in existence at that time. I shouldn't say Michael Beckwith was, and I should say visioning <laughs> how he got it. Um, was not in existence at that time. Um, it was my intention that, wow, that's what I'd like to do at the end of my ministry. I would love to bring spirituality and education together um, in a business, keeping in mind that it was a business. And that would be my contribution to getting to 100 million people. I think that came out a few years ago. And so after I was in several churches and I was assistant minister in many churches because I was do, go, went back to my uh, education career of being a president of a college or university. So I learned more and more and more and I developed my spirituality skills and what it is to be a minister that brought me to where I am. But when I was in ministerial school, this is what I wanted to emphasize. I needed $5,000 to finish my program. And I had no idea how I was going to do that. So I took that to prayer every single day, knowing that God would provide. And <clears throat> what happened was it came from the entire amount came from a husband of a woman that I had been in business with years earlier. And we were friends and I would go to her house and we were talking and he walks in and says, I'll give you $5,000. I just think your ministry is fantastic. 
And there it was. And he said, I'm not going to charge you any interest, but you can pay me back when you can after you're in your first ministry. So there it was. I also learned during that time that prayer needs to be for what you need. If you need a massage right. table, because I was a massage therapist, you don't ask for the money. You ask for the table. And someone right. called, said their chiropractor was giving away a table, and would I like it? And so all of the yeah. specifics of prayer need to be there. Yeah. So and what do you what, think a lot of people um, a lot of people don't demonstrate as quickly as possible or as quickly as they could? Would you say it's because we're not being specific enough? or we haven't got that faith, or is it a combination of all of it? Because oh, that, that really ran true for me. That that part just really ran, ran true for me about really being specific. And, yeah. yeah. Well, and now, you don't want to... Um, close off. Ex yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, if it's a new... But I will tell you, every time I had to rent a house when I moved, I knew it with my children, I knew I needed three bedrooms but i needed a configuration of a playroom for kids and a living room for adults and then the kitchen and so on and until i would draw it out i didn't manifest it oh that is so interesting yeah that is so interesting yeah. because we know that the mind works with images so well doesn't it rather mm -hmm. than just mm -hmm. words when we image oh. things mm -hmm it can really right. accelerate uh, the demonstration. So you drew it out almost like a vision, a vision board. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then it would show up. And I think we also need to know that we have to recognize it when the answer shows up. Sometimes we deny it because maybe it wasn't exactly what we thought it should be, but it is the right opportunity. Yeah. And I used to always tell my practitioners when I became a practitioner, my my counselors, also people in my uh, colleges and universities. My receptionist one time said, may I talk to you personally in your office? And I said, of course. And she said, you are so good. I, I, I know that you go to church. What church do you go to? And I've been searching for a faith. And I said, well, first of all, I'm going to tell you that you do search until you find a faith that you can stand on. Right. And you learn it and you study it until you know you can stand on that faith. And then if you want to go play around in other things, that's okay. But you have a, 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 a faith and that's what I believe for me, science of mind is, and a way of life. It's a philosophy and a faith and a way of life. And the, and the thing is, when we know it's working, why change it? <laughs> yes, absolutely. It becomes our foundation, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes. So but it does take practice. It mm -hmm. takes practice, of course. So now you, uh, you know, this Sunday or Saturday, is it Saturday? Yes, Saturday the 12th, you have uh, so many beautiful ministers that are graduating. And yes. this must really light, light your heart and, and, and just affirm the power of what you are doing and that prayer really works. And that mm -hmm. others are also benefiting from it because they've come in, coming through the school and now becoming ministers. Right. It's beautiful. We have 20 graduates already from from the campus. We have uh, before the before it was a campus, it was a satellite uh, and Denver sponsored the satellite. So we actually have about 28, 29 total alumni. But every single one of them, uh, Reverend Peggy and I just did this study. They are in the ministry now. If you, I was running other colleges and universities, and we had to track very closely the job placement rate because that depended upon our accreditation. And when we did this, so it was a few weeks, several weeks ago, 
um, everybody is in the ministry. We have a hundred play, a hundred percent job placement. I am so, and all of these that are graduating on Saturday know where they are going to be placed, know where they are going. And uh, it is, I'm so proud of them. Now, what I'm excited about, I have to now talk about when you said time treasures and uh, talent, right? Okay, because that's what we all always talk about. Time comes from my discussion with a new student. What is your family like? How are you called the ministry? You know, tell me uh, what is motivating you to continue your education. And I ask them about their, okay, let's see, their family, why, their work life, uh, what center they are associated with, and then financially, uh, how is their, how are, do they plan to pay for ministerial school? And I have had so many students now in the, after six years, seven years that have gone through that had no financial wherewithal. In fact, I had a student on um, social security and child support. And she has, uh, because of her friends, knowing her worth and that she deserves it. And she has so much faith and belief and she has gone through and taken, I think, five years. You can take two to six years to get to become a minister in the Centers for Spiritual Living. And I've had people take six years. I've had people take two years. It all depends on those three things. Right. And it is such a wonderful thing because I believe that once you answer the call to ministry, that you are a minister. You already see yourself as a minister and it's just about gaining the credentials. And my father used to always tell me the commitment has to be made before the money will follow. Right. In anything that a board of trustees, anything you do personally, anything, and boy, that certainly has proven true for me in uh, being minister in churches, um, in uh, centers, as well as the school of ministry. And your commitment to, to faith in the process and your belief and your knowing, that's contagious, Reverend Catherine. Oh, that's because good. I feel that <laughs> as, as your student, you know, in the, in the Florida campus. I feel, I hear your voice in my head. <laughs> I hear it. Yeah. In my and moments we have, of doubt, <laughs> I hear you. We, yeah. So, and we have scholarships available too, which, and we had one student that went outside our organization and in faith, she applied for another scholarship and was given $2,500 from another yeah. source. Fabulous. Just fabulous. So that is what sees you through. God well, gives I you the opportunities. Oh, I love it that you're mm -hmm. here right now because for anybody that's listening, if you're here on New Thought Media Network, listening to the Cosmic Prayer, you're with the amazing Reverend Catherine Knox who's speaking about prayer and her ministry and as a dean of the uh, CSL School, School of Spiritual Leadership Florida campus, uh, Reverend Catherine has ministered many, many ministers and yet to be ministers who are following their heart's calling to be of service in, in life. And, and we're talking about prayer and so Reverend Catherine, for anybody that might be watching right now that is really, you know, this is sparking and igniting something in more in their hearts. How can we reach out to you? How can they find you um, to, to have a conversation with you about this? Yes. Yeah. Well, I prefer that you call me or text me and tell me you're interested. If I, if I don't answer, just leave me a voicemail and I will call you back as soon as possible. Uh, you could email me also 
but I really feel like there's a conversation that needs to happen before you are sent anything because ministerial school can be customized to fit your life. Yeah. If it's time and you need to take it slower because you want to continue working, which we have had those, uh, maybe you want to get a master's degree in Holmes Institute, or maybe you just want to take 10 for a certificate in spiritual education and move through the ministerial certificate to become a minister as quickly as you can. And I also want to say this. I always thought that call, being called to the ministry, I had to have some big um, explosion like a firework. Well, that is not true. Sometimes it just comes. It's just within you, especially as you are studying a, a, a passionate, a, a philosophy that you develop a passion for and how it changes your life completely and you want to share it with others. There's just no other better way than to go ahead and continue in ministerial school. Yeah. So, so call, email, and we'll talk about you. Call, email, talk about you. Let's talk about you. If this is your calling, it's in your heart right now, then there's no excuse. <laughs> Reverend Catherine's details, maybe Diego can pass them by again. And, um, and I love that what you've just said that it's not always about this big idea you know oh i've got to do this or mm -hmm. I, I need to do that it can it can be something that just um develops in a really organic mm -hmm. way and that's for me correct. personally yeah for me personally my my life experience through the last three years has a, of being in this process of 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 learning and studying and growing and expanding in my heart's consciousness of opportunities that come along the way that I would never have known about before at the beginning of it. I wouldn't have thought, you know, I'd be here now on New Thought Media Network or have had the experience last last year that has really opened me up to wanting to help or serve with people that find themselves in how, you know, without a home. And so we get these opportunities given along the way, don't we? Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And everyone deserves it. Anybody listening from another time frame, um, in fact, two of our students graduating this Saturday, one is from Australia and one is from Canada. So you can study and learn uh, no matter where you are. So that's why I encourage you to get in touch with me. Yes. Mm -hmm. So and it's Catherine, exciting. It is. It's a. It's such an exciting journey, especially yeah. when um, we're back in again and you have your cruises. <laughs> That's that exciting. Right? We do too. have. A, yeah. Yes, it is. It is. Yes. All kinds of so experiences. Catherine, I'm really interested as as we come to the kind of 40 three quarters of an hour now we've been really okay. having such a beautiful conversation for anybody right now that may be experiencing something that's challenging for them or has been through the last year with covid and maybe relationships or business or financial challenges how could how would you what would you say to them if they've never really prayed and to, yet, just, to, inspire, to inspire it for that person as a, as, as a practice. Just connect with God, however you see God, however it is for you. If God is an energy, but if you call it a higher power, all our 12-step programs use the higher power. But there is a power in this universe for good that is greater than you are, and you can use it. Mm. And that was how Ernest Holmes finished every one of his radio programs. Yeah. And to know that and have faith that it will guide you to pick up the phone, call somebody uh, that supports you, 
and loves you. And know that God loves you. And you are beloved. Absolutely. I think so. that's one of the most important things to, to that you that you can say here that God loves us because we're mm -hmm. not all we're not all always brought up with that belief that we're mm -hmm. loved by God. That could Absolutely. be a hard one to, to get through for many people to understand yeah. and to believe. Yeah. Yep. I certainly was in the beginning, but to know that I am loved and that we are perfect just as we are you are perfect just as you are right now in this moment no matter whether there's a lot of light or whether there's some darkness as we call the dark night of the soul can happen yeah, yeah. god always loves you mm -hmm. absolutely beautiful oh this has been wonderful laura thank oh, you for having me on it's such a joy thank and you. And I feel so grateful that you're here, Reverend Catherine Knox from Florida Campus School of Spiritual Leadership. Uh, mm -hmm. Diego, I think we'll put your details up and you can, there we go. And you, if you're interested in having a conversation with Reverend Catherine about mm -hmm. your calling to ministry as a, as a, as a, a, a religious scientist uh, or Centers for Spiritual Living Minister, then Reverend Catherine is just waiting for you. Absolutely. I am. I know you are. And the wonderful information that you have. And Reverend Catherine, it would be great if we can finish the show with a prayer. Okay, I would love to. So let's all right, let's begin. Oh, go ahead. Laura. Okay. Beautiful. That's beautiful. Yeah. All right, let's take a minute. And if you feel like it, close your eyes. If not, you can keep them open. But turn within, turn inside to that place where you can feel the presence of God. And if you do not feel the presence of God, know that that presence, that energy, that love, that joy, that beauty, that incredible intelligence is in and through you and everywhere present there is no spot that god is not and so i am knowing that anyone listening to this broadcast is in that incredible envelopment of love and peace and harmony and as i know this for you i know it for me and i know it for all of humanity globally we are one mind one life and it is incredible to feel that love and i realize that right now as you are listening to your higher self it guides you it guides you in the next moments of your life in the next months of your life in the next years of your life and that you listen that there is an intuitive part of you in this realization that is listening to what spirit has to tell you. And I am so grateful to know this, to share this. I am grateful for all who listened. I am grateful for Diego, our producer, and Laura Topper in UK. What a wonderful host. And for all that are involved with the Florida Campus School of Spiritual Living, I bless you, I bless our students and our alumni and our graduates this week. And in that blessing, I can let go and let God, knowing with complete faith and belief and confidence and trust that these words are already done in the mind of God. And so it is. Amen. And so it is. Oh, Reverend Catherine, thank you so much for being here and shining your light so oh, radiantly. Thank you. It's a, it's a real, real pleasure to be with you. And for again, for anyone that's listening. It's a pleasure to be with you. Um, oh, you can find Reverend Catherine at... Uh, the uh at her on her phone or by email 
I think there we are. Thank you, Diego. <laughs> there are the details for Reverend Catherine mm -hmm. Knox if you're interested in yes. learning more about Thank you, the material. Diego. Yeah, Diego's doing an amazing, amazing thing here on our show. And if you there's the website, beautiful. Oh, and here's our website. Yeah. That's great. Yes, so you can go to our website at cslminister.com. Yeah. And you get a lot of information, hopefully to you, inspire you to give me a call so yes. we can talk about you. Beautiful. Yes. And uh, and if, if you have been fed and nourished and nurtured from this, then you are here now on New Thought Media Network. And if you feel inspired to be a part of the conscious giving flow circulatory process then you are uh you you can there's a link down below here somewhere on the facebook page there you are you can make a donation because new thought media mm. network is an incredible force of inspiration um and spiritual empowerment that's why we're here every day with so many different shows and um, broadcasts and in uh, conversations and uh, meditation, visioning, all sorts of incredible things that happen on a daily, daily basis with beautiful people showing up to give from their hearts to inspire you to know the truth of who you truly are as love. And that's why New Thought Media Network is here. Senior Minister is Reverend Robert Brzezinski, who we love, and he is absolutely guided into a an amazing vision of bringing spiritual practice into everybody's lives here on this planet. Isn't that brilliant? So you can give and support this whole ministry. Yeah. And if you'd like to Man, join I have me. to thank you, Laura, for giving me oh. the confidence to oh. do your radio show. <laughs> Oh, well, you're going to come back. I know you're going to come back here, Reverend Catherine. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> It'll be great. I just had not really participated in this part before. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I am grateful. Oh. Yes, right now, and you'd like to join me. And I remember all you do, and everything you are, what you are, it's like you on the cosmic prayer. Beautiful. <laughs> Thought Media Network is on the rise. We're looking to grow with you. Do you have technical media experience or perhaps a desire to learn? Are you willing to volunteer your precious time and attention? We share this message to benefit all. If you possess a computer with a camera and a microphone, we will share our knowledge with you. Behind the scenes or being the star, let us bless our one. Contact us at info at ntmedia.org.